and we really sell this country short. We have a long ways to go. A great deal of enthusiasm has built up, and that's a good thing. If you want to reconstruct uh, the Wild West, capital WW, you've got to go beyond the living fauna, and uh, at least consider it. And here's where, where there's probably a, a great gap to cross, and many will not, and they may be right. But um, uh, my, my thought is that the Wild West that was natural for a long period of time all through the Pleistocene and uh, before that even and developed as a result of emigrations over the Bering Bridge and evolution of groups of animals in place is, is the ultimate goal and anything less sells it all short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So wolves are fine, condors are fine and, and the living large animals that you mentioned, the elk and ones you have it like buffalo, deer, moose and uh, mountain goat and mountain sheep are great, but we're still dealing with only a third of what was here um, before the losses began. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing how many um, proxy species are reasonably close, and some of them are in, in serious need of help in parts of the world today, that um, if we we're willing to relax some of our our extreme concern about reintroductions, there's some re remarkable opportunities, including to start with one, the African lion, which has mm -hmm. a very close relative in the fossil record in the Pleistocene here. Now, we'd have to have some large beasts um, e that equivalent to that, that for it to prey on, I would imagine. Um, well, if, if you have a, a Turner Fonda type uh, wallet, I don't. But uh, if people come along like that, they want to do good, they want to re reconstruct something mm -hmm. that's different from the, the traditional proxies like cattle and horses, and they go for bison in a big way, and that's yeah. interesting, and I, I want to see it play out. Right. I'm thinking beyond that. Mm -hmm. And the common fossils that come out of the uh, Pleistocene and are last seen in uh, this case maybe 12,000 years ago or a little less are mammoth, camel, horse, and bison those four. And then there's a bunch of less common things like ground sloths and, and uh, brush oxen and saber-toothed cats and, and this extinct lion that I mentioned and another dozen species at least. And many of them have, at least in other continents, have fairly close relatives. How about the ground sloth? What could you find that would take the niche? I know of the ground, ground sloth, sloth is, is, the, is the toughest of all because mm -hmm. that, that order really took a big hit. But uh, ecologically, it may be the rhinoceros is a, is a fair equivalent, and we had them in the fossil record in the late tertiary, mid-tertiary. Uh, rhinos were here. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be totally absurd paleontologically. In the case of the ground sloths, they've got to be slow. It's, yeah. it's just impossible anatomically to get any speed out of them. The versions I've run into indicate that turned over, rotated over foot, and the bulk of the animal, they're just not gracile, they're, they're so bulky. They have no, no appearance of swiftness, and they have no anatomical hint of it. And uh, they surely could have been overtaken by the extinct lions that were here, and the saber-toothed cats, and wolves, and dire wolves. My imagination is all I've got to go on at this point, and that is that with their long arms, with their sharp, long claws, three times the length of an African lion claw in the case, wow. case of megalonyx. And their low basal metabolism, uh, they wouldn't go into shock. And if they were attacked and, and an animal leapt on them from behind, they could reach around with their great long arms and rake the animal in two, practically, with those long claws if mm -hmm. a big cat landed on their back. I definitely have a totem relationship to the Shasta ground sloth. How did you develop a totem relationship to this rather than, say, mammoths? Well, through um, hunting for sloth uh, caves and collecting the shit, and uh, actually coming when I first came to Tucson to start the new job I had with Ted Smiley, and I had never met him before. I walked in the door and, and met Ted, and I think it was the first day that, that I talked to him, he showed me a paper bag full of sloth shit. And uh, I thought, man, I've come to the... I've come to the right place for absolute sure. <laughs>
Another quotation that you have that is really lovely, it comes from the uh, Wild Earth piece, is, In the shadows along the trail, I keep an eye out for the ghosts, the beasts of the Ice Age. And you have a couple other sentences, and then you go on. Such musings add magic to a walk and may help liberate us from tunnel vision, the hubris of the present, the misleading notion that nature is self-evident. Do you get to write like that? I mean, do you have any other? Is you it know, just for Wild Earth that you get to? I get cold chills up my back. Like, mm. did I write that? 